Vera Riley. Um, I'm retired, I live on my own and I just want to talk about my experience during lockdown. Uh, during lockdown, um, living alone every day is it, just exactly the same as the day before. Like you forget what, what day it is. Um, especially I think because I'm retired. Um, but one thing that helped us is I have got a family who all live close by and I could, I did a lot of walking and I would knock on the door and have a few words with them. Hi, my name's Tom, I'm 22. I work at Sunderland Uni as a content designer and I live alone. Living alone during lockdown has been really hard. Um, I haven't been able to see like friends and family for months on, on end. Um, so I think we ended lockdown around March time and I was alone all the way throughout the period that led to us being allowed to exercise outdoors with friends and family. And that's when I was actually able to go around people's like, like houses and go in the garden to, to see people. But there was a long stretch of time where I was just sort of like by myself, like sat in my room doing literally nothing for for, for months and months because um, uh, I, w I was furloughed as well. So it's just been a lot of sitting in the house doing nothing. My name is Pamela. Um, I was employed with Sunderland Counselling Service in May uh, of this year um, as a cancer care counsellor. I also work with the GP referrals as well um, of people who are suffering from depression, anxiety, OCD, um, bereavement, um, the list is endless. Um, any, anyone that has a concern that is affecting their life is um, is referred to Sunderland Counselling Service. In my role, um, I'm employed full time, and that would entail probably talking to about twenty people um, within a week. Do you know what I found really insightful um, during this COVID? Is I mean, I'm employed at the cancer care, so I don't know whether. Um, the, the message was getting out there that there was support available because I think people were so taken back by the shock of it all and that they had to like isolate, they weren't allowed to go out, they weren't having these co uh, conversations with the professionals. So, you know, example, someone who's been diagnosed with cancer is now not allowed to go into the hospital unless it's an emergency and they've got to go for surgery. I think that caused a bit of a decrease in the referrals. So people that were coming through, there wasn't as many, but then there was a lot more coming through on the GP because obviously people were doing online consultations. They were talking about how their mental health was increasing because they were isolating. So I felt that my role was switching more of working with GP uh, referrals than it was with the cancer care. Little alone's been a bit of a struggle. Um, at first, um I liked it admittedly because I thought lockdown would be a lot shorter than it would have been. I was just enjoying time off work um, and like having some, some time in the house to myself. Um, but that very quickly went away, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, so as sort of t weeks went on, not being able to see friends and family or go outside and, and do stuff, um, it's just it, it's really gotten us down. Um, there was a long period where I had like sort of stopped talking to people. Um, just sort of like became more introverted, um, which isn't really like me. It's worth the second lockdown. I think the first lockdown, because it was the summer and it was lovely days, lovely weather, I could get out walking every day, I would do the garden. Um, it was just a totally different experience. Um, the second lockdown, where it was the dark nights and cold and windy, um, totally different experience um, I tried to stay positive and um, by talking to people by phoning and we, we have a whatsapp group so we send jokes all the time and um, without that it would be a nightmare um, if I didn't keep in touch with anybody I would feel um, very lonely I'm used to living on my own as a rule and I quite like spending time on my own I've got my family when I want them I've got time on my own. But lockdown has actually brought home to us how lonely I can be. 
and have been for the time. Every day is exactly the same as the day before. Um, trying to fill the time in, um, getting up later, going for walks, trying to think of something different just to keep yourself stimulated. Um, I did a lot of walking and I was lucky I've got family who lived close by so I could knock on the door and have a few words with them. Um, I keep in touch with family and friends, um, usually by phone or by text. Um, I speak to one of my family members each day. It's very rare that I don't. Um, and say we send jokes to each other, we, we keep each other updated um, and we, tr we try and meet well, we did meet at the first lockdown. We would I would visit and we would sit in a garden, socially distancing, lovely weather. Um, that's not possible at the moment. Um, so it tends to be passing by. Um, I do have a one of my sisters is a bubble, um, which we decided to change that for the second lockdown. I didn't have that at first, um, so I can actually meet up with her and go for walks and things. The best methods I've had uh, for coping during lockdown are definitely like sort of socialising online with friends. Um, we'll go on Xbox like a few nights a week to um, just like mess about and like like catch up on stuff. Um, during the, the beginning of lockdown, there was also like sort of I do Zoom meetings with like family where I would do like online quizzes and things. Thankfully, I've had like a, a good like sort of set of mates and like family to like keep in contact and just make sure that everything's okay. Um, I found that they're doing like hobbies and things that I enjoy really sort of take the stress off of like just being alone constantly. I've been doing lots of like drawings and illustrations on that. Um, going out for walks whenever I feel a bit overwhelmed by everything. Apart from my walking and talking to people, I've um, always enjoyed doing jigsaws and I have quite a few. Um, my daughter also bought me a colouring book and pens because she knows I used to love colouring in um, and I've never watched so much television in all my life and that's about it really. Reaching out to people makes a massive difference. Um, it goes both ways. So I was really appreciative of people reaching out to me. So when I was sort of quiet for a bit, feeling down during lockdown, I had a lot of friends and family keep in touch, which at the time you don't really you don't really think about, but in hindsight it makes such a huge difference to like help your mental state. Um, it's always nice to do it for your friends as well. You, obviously you don't know what people are going through like at this time, so it's nice to just like just check in. Um, I've, I've sort of re, like reconnected with a lot of old friends just by asking how they're doing, because, um, like I said before, you just you, you don't know how it's affecting people. As a counsellor, I feel really privileged that I get to work with vulnerable people. You know, maybe even just being the highlight of the week of that phone call. Um, having endured mental health problems myself in traumatic events, I was I was very lucky that I had people that I could connect with, people that actually were looking out for my well-being. How sad is it to think that you've got someone who lives on their own and who hasn't got that contact with anyone? I would advise that speak to, you know, talk about it, don't suffer in silence because there's always somebody out there, there's always somebody out there that you can talk to. Even if you have to ring your GP and speak to the receptionist, share it, share it with someone that you can share it with it's the, there's always somebody out there i hope there's always somebody out there that can lend a hand to people who are actually struggling during this covid because it isn't a good place to be in i think now that the vaccine has started it has lifted us a bit but i have got to say i'm quite nervous about it um I don't see any alternative and at least being the age I'm 69 now so they started with other people before so they can see if there's any problems um, 
we're on the horn, it's the only thing I think that'll ever get us back to normal. Do you know the thing about, um, I think what I hear more from um, clients um, is the uncertainty. And I think it's been like that since it came out. It was just this huge pandemic that affected not only our country, but around the world. For me, for, for my opinion, I still, I'm still going through all that uncertainty. And I think that's what I pick up on people. So, you know, it's that non-verbal community, even though, non-verbal communication so even though I can't see them I can hear them and I can hear how uncertain they are of what's real and what's not so I think it has created a lot of uncertainty I think there is hope out there I think there's hope that yeah things will make a difference you know with we're strong um, and I think that's what I, I promote in people you know we're strong we're courageous I think it's about instilling that hope in people's minds and just trying to keep a positive outlook on it that you know things will get better. The vaccine news is great um, hopefully they can get it out really quickly and really effectively so that it can save people's lives and get people out of the house and back to work and to society and go back to normal. Um, at the minute uh, my mood hasn't changed a lot because the North East is still in lockdown so I still can't do anything at the minute but um, hopefully this is a really big step in the right direction toward getting things back normal.